Are you ready to overcome the complexities and burdens that come with your success? Join the team at Centura Wealth Advisory in the Live Life Liberated podcast. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to Live Life Liberated with the team from Centura Wealth Advisory. Today, Jonathan Freeman is in studio and has a special guest in studio, and that is Jennifer Barnes. Jonathan, how are you this morning? I'm doing fantastic, Eric. Thanks again for uh, bringing us on and excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Jennifer, thank you so much for being on the show. Jonathan, why'd you bring Jennifer on the show today? Well, Jennifer is a local provider of basically outsourced CFO services. Her company is Optima Office, and she's the CEO. We have a lot of interaction with her, both from some shared clients, but also more importantly, is she's got a strong network here in San Diego. And a lot of times our, our clients and her clients overlap. And so there's a good synergy for us to discuss. And hopefully some of the things we'll talk about today will be really valuable and informative for, for the listening audience. Fantastic. All right. I'm here to learn with them. Well, that's great. So Jennifer, let me start with a little bit of background. I know you you started Optima Office having been in the, the marketplace before in terms of fractional CFO work and have a, a long, I'll call it list of clients that you've worked with, variety of industries, both for-profit, not-for-profit, pretty much I think you've touched everything of every type of industry from what I can tell. Also recognized locally in terms of the top 40 under 40, the San Diego Chamber 2017 Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award. That's pretty amazing. For those that haven't heard of fractional work or fractional CFO services, maybe give us a little bit of introduction in terms of what your your company does and and who they serve. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on the show. I, I appreciate it. Unfortunately, all my 40 under 40s are, are done now that I've hit that past 40 mark. So those, those are just awards for the well, wall. You know, there's point. now that 50 is the new 40, so you still got some time. Right, right. Well, it's been an interesting ride for me, to be honest. I started off in accounting and finance 20 years ago and was a controller for numerous years. I worked for a couple of our competitors in the outsourced accounting and CFO space and then had the great opportunity to start my own firm about eight years ago and grew that company to almost $7 million in res- revenue in six years, got to almost 90 clients, uh, 90 employees. It was wow. a pretty big growth period, and we got fastest growing company in San Diego County. I think we were the fifth fastest growing co- company in San Diego County, and received that three years in a row in Inc. 5000. It was a really fast, interesting ride. I did have the misfortune of being in an equity situation that was not favorable for me, and I only owned 45% of that organization. Needless to say, that didn't go very well. Two years ago, we had a partner split. I was given the opportunity to start Optima. Mm -hmm. I literally started it three days after the partner split. And in just a little over two years, Optima has already reached the $5 million annual revenue mark, and we have 70 employees wow. as of today. That's impressive. So it's been an interesting ride. That's the very short version. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're uh, both a wildcat and uh, an Aztec, is that right? Correct. I did my undergrad in finance and marketing at University of Arizona, and then I... About eight years later, I believe, seven, eight years later, I went to SDSU for my MBA. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and that that's was... Great. A good Decided school. to keep it local here in San Diego. I did. I love the Lavin program that they have there is for entrepreneurs and, and getting the next generation starting businesses. And I've been a mentor in that program oh, for fantastic. about five years now. And it's it's really been rewarding to help. I believe in just helping the next generation with anything we possibly can, just educating them and helping them not make some of the same mistakes that we have made ourselves and also helping them with their successes, how to just celebrate, yeah. celebrate the successes. Well, I think San Diego is just such a great place when it comes to entrepreneurialism and startups. And there's just something that, I don't know if it's the sea, the sun or what, but uh, it seems wolf. to attract <laughs> <laughs> that talent and that creativity. And we often, some of our best clients are those that are starting up a brand new business and, and at some point get to a point where they want to liquidate it or move on to the next piece. And that's where we oftentimes help out. Optima, obviously, it's high growth. You've, you've, it's a market need that's that seemingly out there and is in really high demand. What was it? Was it just kind of starting your own business that was the real crux here, the epiphany? Making um, me ask the tough, answer the tough questions here, you know? <laughs> well, it's a hot well, seat. 
a little over eight years ago, I was working for one of our competitors. And let's just say we had a difference of opinion in multiple areas. He actually terminated my position oh and said that I no longer work at the company and that basically see you later. I didn't really like that see you later. So I said, well, I'm just going to take some of the clients and start my own business. Fortunately, he gave me the opportunity and called the clients, many of the clients. I think he called about 15 of the clients that I was servicing as a controller and gave them the option. Do you want to go with Jennifer? She's going to go off on her own. Or you want to stay with us, our big, reputable firm. What a huge blessing. 12 of the 15 clients came with me. So here I was six weeks before my wedding (laughs) and with a book of business. But then a bunch of the employees quit and came to work with me. So here I am, I have no name of a company. I just have a bunch of clients and some employees. So we started out of my living room. So for many months, we worked out of my living room and I did happen to come across my partner that I was with for six years. We went 50-50 kind of a partnership. He already had a business started that was for professional athletes and high wealth individuals. And it kind of meshed with the outsourced accounting, back office, bookkeeping, facilitation. So we decided to partner up together and create that 50-50 equity relationship. Probably was one of my bigger mistakes in life of partnering with someone that you didn't really know all that well. Yeah. But again, I was in my early 30s and I just thought, well, go for it. Fast forward about three years in, I had built the company to about 40 employees, made a couple million in revenue. I started feeling a little resentful, thinking, you know, I'm doing all the work. You own half the company. Let's step up to the plate, buddy. Let's start, let's start doing a little bit of work here. Yeah. So he worked one day a week in 2015. Then we decided to hire him full time in 2016 as our chief operating officer. In the same kind of breath in those two year period, we found a CFO that was gonna bring some clients and some team over. So we offered him 10%. Hence the equity situation. We became 45, 45, 10, uh-huh. built the company together. And with any new marriage or partnership, you kind of work out some kinks on where do we work really well together? Where do we not work so well together? After 2016, 2017, we realized that we work less well together than we work well together. (laughs) There was just so many misalignments in what we wanted for the future and and how we operated a company together. So that is why in the end of 2018, September of 2018, they decided, we're going to go about this the wrong way. We're basically going to kick you out of your own company. We're going to have you walked out with security. We're going to disconnect all of your access to everything you've ever had. We're actually even going to suspend your cell phone number that you've had for 20 years. See you later, little girl. Let the big boys take over. That did not work so well in their favor because I'm a pretty relentless, resilient, tenacious, determined female who is not going to get pushed around. So I literally got home that day. Three days later, started Optima, moved in across the street from them, from my current office a couple weeks later. 27 of the employees are now with me at the new firm. And we've got almost 200 clients in two years. Well, well, so that's showing them. <laughs> that's 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 a little longer version, but got it. Tell me a little bit about your client base. Are they maybe describe it a little bit for for those that are listening in? Sure. No, thank you for the question. I, I think it's very, it's such a needed service. Even with the pandemic having gone the way it has, many businesses are realizing that having one person do everything is not necessarily the most efficient way to run a business. What we do is we get the right person doing exactly what they're good at. Our clients range from startups to companies that are doing well over 50 million in revenue. Wow. They could have two employees, they could have 200. We do some big projects for clients that might need forensic accounting, they might need some audit preparation or tax preparation, getting everything kind of finalized and done so they can get to their CPA to be more effective. Typically, our sweet spot is clients between three and 20 million and in every single industry. We actually do quite a bit of real estate, property management. We do a lot of not-for-profit work, a lot of professional services. And then we have some very strong CFOs on the manufacturing side, distribution. We even have some agriculture, larger agriculture clients that are growing flowers or tomatoes or lemons or avocados. So just name it. I mean. Pretty Pretty much much every single industry and every client. And we give them options. Do you need a CFO? Not necessarily. If you're a $3 million company that's not going through any M&A transaction, not not looking to sell their business, not looking to do something that you would really need a high-level CFO strategy-wise, we have them a controller. 
They might need a controller one day a month, one day a week. We might couple that with just a senior accountant, maybe an accounting manager and a junior staff associate. So it kind of just taking a look at every single business and what is the right structure for them. Mm -hmm. And we bill it out on an hourly basis. That makes sense. So it might be a $45 an hour person, 20 hours a month. It might be a $200 person, 10 hours a month or 50 hours a month. It makes it pretty easy to calculate. And then we grow with, with their the business. business. Yeah. yeah, we support them as they might double or triple in size or look to do a transaction, or look to do a sale and look to you guys to help them with their wealth management and planning. I mean, with the way you described it, it sounds like every company could use your services. Are there any that wouldn't be a good fit to give us a disqualifier? Publicly traded companies are not in our sweet spot at all. Okay. They could potentially bring us in for a project, but we don't deal with a lot of publicly held companies. And then businesses that are doing over $100 million, unless they need us for a one-off project, you're probably not going to engage with us on an ongoing basis. So needless to say, some of our clients have outgrown us. I think that was one of your questions yeah. that you, we were talking about is the staff accountant's probably the first one to go. They start needing one of my staff associates, staff accountants, 30 hours a week, 35 hours a week. We're going to raise our hand and say, you know what, let's help you hire somebody. So we'll help them hire the right so person. So you actually help bring them in some talent. We will. We, we do HR as a service as well. So okay. we have seven HR managers and directors on our team. We'll actually act as their recruiting manager. We'll place the ads, we'll vet out the resumes, and then we'll manage and train that staff accountant. Oh, wow. Then it becomes an accounting manager that needs to get hired, maybe an AR manager, accounts receivable or accounts payable manager. And then the controller and the CFO are the last people on our team, maybe HR director. So mm -hmm. we've got three people from my team. Then they hit 10 million, 15 million. They're just going gangbusters. They're busy. They, they need a full-time controller. Rinse and repeat. We'll help them hire the controller. We'll replace ourselves. And then the CFO, typically the last one standing. Right. Well, wow, that's like a full life cycle. You get every stage, helping them along the way, really seeing them grow and prosper. And, and really, I'm sure there's a sense of satisfaction that comes from that. Yeah. And I, I think they really appreciate the relationship along the way. We've always been there for them. We continue to be there for them. And we've got some larger organizations that do not stop needing our services because they've grown so much, but then there'll be a maternity leave or there'll be a disability or somebody will, something will happen and they'll say, Optima, can you come in and fill this seat for us for another couple months? Can you fill two days a week helping with the financial analyst role? Or helping some employee relations or recruiting. And so they come back and bring us back in. So I think the relationship is not necessarily ever completely over because we've done such a good job along the way supporting them mm -hmm. that they'll always turn around and, and need us again in the future. No, that's great. A lot of our clients are, are business owners of different sizes of both for-profit and not-for-profit. And many times where we have a big impact is when they're considering selling their business. It's a big taxable event in many cases, and that's where we try and specialize. I'm sure a lot of your clients, given what's been going on, are, are seeing the trends and are considering that as well. In what aspects do you kind of coach, counsel, and support business owners when they're looking at that kind of uh, situation? Supporting you guys and making sure that you really know how much is this person going to have after the sale? What do they need to live off of? What is their lifestyle like? If they think that they're going to get X amount for their company and then they really get Y, or God forbid it's it's way under what they expect, then it just leaves them a lot less to, to work with in the future. And it probably makes it a little more difficult for, for you folks. The most important thing for us is making sure that the financials are accurate. Every balance sheet account should be moving every month over month. The, the profit and loss statement should, everything should be in the right place, in the right bucket. We should really know what that true EBITDA number is. In the case of a real estate company, you want to make sure the FFO is is, 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 you're really looking at that. You know, there's just so many different industries that you want to make sure how much is this company really worth? Mm -hmm. And then making some of it turnkey. If you have operations that are solely dependent on a few individuals, makes it a little more difficult to sell. How do you create processes and procedures within your organization so that if you do want to sell it, it's so turnkey that you can easily, somebody can step into that position, you can walk away from the organization, or maybe you consult for a year or two, but it's self-dependent. Yeah, there's no uh, linchpin or individual contributor that's keeping the whole thing going. Right. It's looking at the, ca doing a cash flow forecast. How much cash do you have right now on the balance sheet? At this current spend rate, how much are you going to have? 
what is really the cash flow from operations? What does this business generate? And you'd be surprised how many people that go to sell their business don't know the answer to that. Right. Yeah. They just think it's, you know, hit the easy button and they'll get a nice payday. Yeah. In terms of it sounded what you described to me was consulting work. Is that really part of the service package or is that really an add on type of thing? We have eight chief financial officers at the company, all with different backgrounds. At least half of them know M and A. So they're gonna go through the whole due diligence checklist. They're gonna they're gonna be the quarterback to a certain extent with the investment bank, with the wealth manager, maybe even the insurance company, CPA firm. They're they're going to be the liaison that everything's going to flow through. They're going to be the right hand or left hand, depending on how you look at it, to the CEO. Really guiding the CEO through the transactions, checking all the boxes, managing everybody, managing expectations, and then really helping to negotiate on the sale itself. This is really what your firm is worth. This is really what the cash flow that it's it's operating with. Mm -hmm. You look at your CFO as really your right-hand person. For sure. You need a really strong CFO to go through any sale. And I think some businesses try to go through a sale without a CFO. And I don't know that it goes as well as if you actually had a a seasoned CFO. So I've got eight to choose from. Yeah, that's a good choice. (laughs) In the sale process, is having a consulting CFO ever looked down upon? Or is the fact more that they don't have a CFO and they've recognized that they need one really the key here? Fractional CFO support is so prevalent these days. I mean, Tatum came up with that fractional interim CFO model, what, 20 years ago. Right. I worked for Tatum back in, gosh, 2007. I think it's one of those things that everyone is aware of the fractional CFO services. So if you at least have someone, Mm -hmm. then it doesn't really matter whether it's a full-time employee or whether it's consulting outsourced or fractional CFO. And frankly, some of the time, your in-house CFO may never have done that before. They may they may be an amazing CFO. That might be strategic, be at all your management meetings, give you great financials, give you great advice, but they've never gone through a sale. You'll want to hire a consultant who has gone through a sale. Right, experience matters for sure. Right. In, in terms of these, I'll call them life, life events where you're selling your business, how early would you want a business owner to engage in, in terms of getting you up to speed, getting all those processes and, and KPIs and everything else you're talking about? Is it three months, six months, a year? The longer runway that we have to make an impact in the value of the company, the better. People have brought us in five years before they decide to sell. If you have a three-year window, let's get it done now. Let's I mean, the goal should be to increase the valuation of your company over time. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things that you can do in the accounting department to make that happen. People sometimes, I want to say, don't place a lot of emphasis or value on the accounting team. They think of us as a sunk cost. (laughs) But a good accounting team is really going to pay for themselves and the value that they bring to the business and increasing your your current ratio, for example. If you're operating on a one to one current ratio, which means your assets equal your liabilities, well, that's not as good as having two to one. Sure. Right? If you double the assets as you what if you own more than you owe, that's good. That's good, right? That's a good equation. So no, how do one. we make the balance sheet goals to be so that you own more than you owe, and doubling it and tripling it over time, and then finding what what is the right thing to do with those investments and the extra capital that you have in your business, which is where we would work with you guys. Yep. So sense. it's kind of a life cycle, but. If somebody knows they're going to sell their business in three months, that's a tough window. That's a tough window. They should still bring us in and we'll still make a difference. We'll still help them likely sell the business for more and make the process easier. But I think minimum a year yeah, I is think it's probably a, good, a little bit uh, of a better answer. Well, here's one of my questions I like asking all of our guests. As you look into next year, it's going to be 2021 here in a matter of moments, what would you consider your top action items for a CEO or business owner to have on his plate as they think about areas within their business that they have to optimize for, consider, worry about? This was a year that I'm sure many will never forget, trying to be effective in, in managing for next year. What are you telling your, your, your clients and your business owners now? COVID has changed some things. 
the biggest impact has been on certain clients' revenues. And it's not just their direct revenues, it's what is the effect of their clients' revenues, of their customers' customers? How is your revenue gonna be impacted in 2021? First and foremost, we wanna make sure that all of our clients have an accurate cash flow forecast for the next quarter. What amount of money are you going to end the year with in 2020? And then look a whole quarter out, and what are you gonna end the first quarter with? And if you don't have a pretty darn good idea of where your cash is going to go, how much you need to operate, what your burn rate is, what are your revenue expectations, how fast do you collect accounts receivable, what bills are gonna be due, that makes you fly blind to a certain extent if you don't have that. I highly recommend every single business, even if you've got $2 million in the bank, you still wanna be able to plan accordingly so that you can make decisions with that money. Number one, cash flow forecast for, for 2021, the first quarter at least. I like to do it for the whole year and then adjust it every week. Go. A rolling forecast. Yeah, and then, and then at the end of the year, I like to see how close was I. I do it for my own business. That's actually my only accounting task at this point in time. I've completely given up all my finance accounting tasks, but doing my cash flow forecast is so incredibly important that I personally still do it. Interesting. Don't know if I'm going to give it up anytime soon, you know, but, <laughs> but I enjoy it. I'm, an, I'm a number nerd, right? I'm, I'm, a, I'm an accountant by trade, so I, I got to still be able to play with an Excel spreadsheet from time to time. There you go. The second thing that kind of goes in line with your cash flow forecast is having a 2021 budget that is realistic with your revenue goals. And again, it's kind of how COVID has affected your revenue goals. Some businesses, it's drastically increased their revenue. Some of it has taken it away. I mean, if you're a restaurant owner... God, you really can't even predict 2021 that well. And yeah. that's that's very unfortunate. But do your very best to be conservative with your 2021 budget and cut out anything that really you don't need and that you wouldn't purchase again. When companies are looking at their 2021 budget, sometimes they're looking at there's all these dues and subscriptions or there's all these memberships or there's all these off, all these office costs that can be recurring. Mm -hmm. Would you buy it again? Would you sign up again? Would you subscribe again? And if the answer is no, then take the five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever it is to take Turn that out of the it. budget. Yeah. But sometimes people just let things ride. Oh, it's only $20. Oh, it's only $50. Oh, it's $100. Well, we found a client the other day that had $1,000 a month in crap they weren't using. That adds like up. We just we just helped pay for, I mean, we just saved you $12,000 just by looking at a couple of small things. So it's really looking at it's almost a zero-based budget. What do you need to operate your business? And then work backwards. The no number three thing, make sure that your CPA can plan for your 2020 tax situation. And I know you guys are so busy right now helping clients navigate their cash and their situation because of the, the election change yeah, and change in the change in the presidency how is that going to affect people's financial situation and their tax situation in 2021 what can we do for the next three weeks of this year to help protect ourselves and making sure that your cpa is actually planning and preparing and looking at those numbers for you is crucial that is more for cash-based businesses that if you spend a thousand dollars on december 31st that whether it's a prepaid expense or whether that's something on your credit card, you still get to write that off in 2020. Especially businesses that had a PPP loan, right? If that's gonna get forgiven, well, then you've just set yourself up for none of those expenses can be deductible. So you wanna prepay your whole first quarter. I'm gonna prepay my rent for six months. I'm gonna prepay my, prepay my healthcare for three months. I'm gonna prepay everything humanly possible so that Assume that you helps have the my cash taxes. to do that. Right. Right. But I'm a, I'm a professional and I know that a professional accounting service I know that that's what I need to do. Well, many businesses don't know that they need to do that. Hmm. Coordinate with your CPA, make sure they have your book, that they have your accurate financials in hand so they can make decisions for you. If you are an accrual based taxpayer, you have a little more of a runway. You can still make some of those decisions up until you actually file your taxes. You can accrue for things, you can make some changes, but you'll still want to go into 2021 with as much information as possible. Just plan and prepare, set a meeting with your CPA, and make sure that you're giving them the accurate financials that hopefully your accounting team is providing you. That's so there's cool. three. I mean, I can keep going. I've got well, a bunch. Why don't you give us one more gem, time. and then we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll move on. 
I, I would say if you are a cash based taxpayer as well and you and you feel the need to be generous, consider donating to a nonprofit. I know that you guys have some really great tactics on how you can make that more efficient for people. So I say reach out to Centura and and ask them about what they can what they can do to help you minimize your tax obligations. And donating to a nonprofit is is really special. They're struggling right now. I think any nonprofit would really appreciate the support. I'm gonna do one quick one too, is in human resources. Yep. Because I think this is important and I didn't address much on the human resource side, is that the CARES Act created a lot of complexity with your FFCRA and your FFMLA. For example, if somebody on your team gets COVID, you know you can get up to $500 a day through payroll taxes reimbursed to you. You have 20 people on your team who have gotten COVID or had to quarantine or have issues staying at home now because their parents, well, you actually get paid for that through the CARES Act, through through your payroll taxes. Yeah. I have found that most businesses aren't aware of it. We just found a company that had a huge hole in that area. Mm -hmm. We literally are going to get them about $40,000 in CARES Act credits that they would not have even known about had they not engaged a professional human resource firm to handle that for them. That's great. Yeah. Don't leave money on the table. Final rule of advice. (laughs) That's great (laughs) advice. And I certainly would. There was plenty of misinformation and lack of dissemination of information around all the different acts that were uh, passed this year. We've tried to address some of those in our other podcasts, but that's another great piece of advice. Well, Jennifer, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I know we were able to skim through this. If anyone is curious about your business, your business model, and how you might be able to help them, how would they get get it in touch with you? There's a couple different ways that you can get in touch with Optima Office. One is our office line. Somebody always answers. We have an answering service, so you can always get through to a live person well, that's, that's going great. to talk to Pretty you. Well, that's great. Pretty unusual these days. Well, some people don't like to leave messages like, my financials are a mess on, on a voicemail. Sure. So 858-283-1234 is our office line. You can also reach me at jennifer at optimaoffice.com. And of course, you can go to our website and learn a little bit more. There's a form you can fill out and we can contact you. And that's just OptimaOffice.com. Well, that's fantastic. Jennifer, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. Thanks again. And I hope you have a tremendous final few weeks of 2020 and look forward to uh, carrying on our conversations into the new year. Jonathan, thank you so much for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to be going to Tahoe for three weeks, well, two and a half. So I will be having a great rest of my year. Fantastic. Stay at home order is moving me to Northern California. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds great. Well, Eric, over to you. I love hearing stories of success like this, especially someone who could have easily been bullied into a different position or just been told, hey, no, this is your place. And you said, no, you're like, uh-uh, this is not my place. I'll show you what my place is. And you really did. And Jonathan put it best when, when he said, no, you showed him you, exactly. You proved exactly what can be done with tenacity and determination. I love this. Jonathan, thank you so much for bringing Jennifer on today. Oh, you're welcome, Eric. And thank you so much for being our host. Absolutely. And of course, the last thank you goes to you listening audience. Thank you for tuning in and listening to the Live Life Liberated podcast with the team from Centura Wealth Advisory. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when they come out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thanks for listening today. For everyone at Centura Wealth Advisory, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Live Life Liberated podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Centura Wealth Advisory. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Centura Wealth Advisory, Centura, is an SEC registered investment advisor with its principal place of business in San Diego, California. Centura and its representatives are in compliance with the current registration and notice filing requirements imposed on SEC registered investment advisors, in which Centura maintains clients. Centura may only transact business in those states in which it is notice filed or qualifies for an exemption or exclusion from notice filing requirements.
Past performance is no guarantee of future results. Tax relief varies based on client circumstances and all clients do not achieve the same results.